Greetings, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, video devotional from Silver Bay YMCA. Uh, my name's Garth Allen. I'm the Spiritual Life Director here. Uh, Bruce Tamlin, our chaplain, is with us, and Austin Porth, who is our video marketing specialist. I don't know if that's the right title, but it's pretty close. So and he, he does everything technical for us, and we're glad to have him with us. Uh, we hope to offer you a bit of encouragement today uh, as we get together. We're here in the Silver Bay Chapel. Uh, we're filming here because we're not sure how much longer uh, we'll be able to be in the chapel. The uh, fall is, is moving forward and winter will be here before we know it. Um, it's very beautiful still here in the Adirondack Mountains, but uh, it'll be a different kind of beauty when the snow flies and gets colder. So uh, during our time, we want to do a few things. We want to pray together. We want to look at uh, God's Word and see what it might have to say to us and then we want to sing a couple songs and so uh, we're grateful that you're with us uh, that you've chosen to spend some time with us uh, via video today. Bruce would you like to say anything? Yeah sure it's uh, it's great to be with you wherever you are in your home or apartment or around the country um, and just because we're not all together at Silver Bay it doesn't mean that you're still not part of the community and that uh, we um, Garth and I and Austin and so many of other uh, staff that uh, we keep Silver Bay going and um, lots of opportunities to tap into that Garth will tell us about later to continue uh, being with us. And even though we're physically apart, please know that uh, uh, we, we're together in spirit and the opportunity for us to be with you today is a blessing for us and we hope for you too. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Let's pray together. Gracious God, uh, we do thank you uh, for this opportunity once again uh, to be together, uh, as Bruce said, um, maybe not physically, but to be together, uh, to be connected uh, by our love for Silver Bay and by our connection to you. And so uh, we invite for you to be our teacher uh, as we open up the word that we would uh, be humble and open to learn what you have to say to us today uh, from your word. Uh, thank you for this place, uh, for Silver Bay, uh, for this place, particularly this chapel. Uh, so many people have had uh, just wonderful experiences here as individuals and as families attending weddings and memorial services and uh, Sunday worship and Vespers and just so many great things have happened here uh, that this is a special place. So we're grateful to be here. Uh, Lord, we invite your spirit to uh, be among us, uh, to move and to work. Uh, we love you, we thank you, and we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. This, uh, today, uh, this video is being recorded uh, earlier than it will be shown. And I suspect it will be shown on November 4th, which will be the day after uh, our most recent election. And so we don't really know <laughs> the, the outcome of the election at this point. Um, and so we won't really make any commentary on it other than I can confidently say here a couple weeks out that God is on his throne. God is in charge of our world and our country. Uh, Jesus still loves each and every one of us. And the Holy Spirit is still guiding and directing our lives, no matter the outcome of the election. And that we can grasp and hold to firmly. And so I hope that provides comfort to you. I know it does to me. Um, I'm not sure what you're facing as you're watching this video, uh, as you're listening to this devotional. Uh, my goal is simply to offer some encouragement. Uh, I think we can always use a little bit more encouragement, uh, particularly in these days, right? With COVID-19, uh, it's continuing to drag on. Uh, there seem to be uh, spikes around our country and around the world. And uh, there's just uncertainty and anxiety and angst that we have during these days. Um, I'm not sure we can even verbalize or explain how we feel about this. There's just sort of this underlying uh, uh, tone of uh, struggle, of darkness, of stress. And maybe some of those feelings are linked to the shorter days that we're experiencing as uh, winter approaches. And maybe it's, it has to do with uh, the, just this ongoing struggle with COVID-19 or I don't know, just it's just a hard time to be alive and to sort of figure these things out. It's not all dreary and dark, um, but in the midst of, of dealing with some challenges and some darkness, I want us to spend our time thinking actually about light, uh, specific, specifically what God's word has to say about light. 
So I'm going to read a couple of passages and make some comments on them and then ask Bruce to, to give me his thoughts and we'll see uh, what God's Word has to teach us about light and embracing light in our world. Uh, the first passage is from John 8:12. Uh, Jesus is speaking, and this is a familiar, famous passage. Jesus says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And he makes some pretty bold claims in this short verse. Uh, if you know John's gospel, several times Jesus says these statements, I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. Uh, I am the shepherd, the great shepherd. And this use of the I am phrase uh, for Jewish people recalls Exodus 3, uh, when Moses encountered God in the burning bush. And he said to God, who shall I say sent me to the people when I go to them? And he says, my name in Hebrew is Yahweh. Uh, if you translate that into English, uh, the name means I am what I am, or I will be what I will be. And so when Jesus is using these statements saying I am, he's sort of equating himself with God, that he is from God. And as we learn, as we read through the scriptures, that he is God's son. And then also Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And the Greek word there that's translated world is cosmos. Cosmos comes directly into English. So it might be better translated or possibly translated, Jesus saying, I am the light of the universe. So all that is, all that is created, Jesus is the light of all that. And then he ends by saying, uh, those who follow me have light in their lives. Uh, if we follow Christ, we don't need to fumble around in the darkness. Uh, when we see Christ, we can see clearly. Uh, we can see how to live and how to have meaning and hope in our lives. And then the next verse is similar. It's Jesus is again speaking, but this comes from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 14. Jesus says this uh, to his disciples, to his followers. He says, you are the light of the world. Uh, in John, he says, I am the light of the world. Then in Matthew 5, he says, you are the light of the world, which is just interesting. Uh, in one sense, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And then he says, you, if you follow me, you are the light of the world. I don't know about you, but that surprises me when I hear that Jesus says that I'm the light of the world. Because uh, there's lots of times I don't feel like I provide much light. Um, and it, it just seems uh, sort of flabbergasting for me to be equated in some way with Jesus like this. And so he doesn't leave us on our own to figure what that means, to figure out what it means that we're the light of the world. In verses 15 and 16, Jesus then says, A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, light is an interesting uh, physical phenomenon. We can't necessarily see light unless we pass it through a prism and it sort of breaks into this rainbow of colors. But light is all around us and it actually helps us to see, but we can't really see it. Uh, it impacts, uh, the impacts and effects of light help us to have vision, help us to see, and help us to see clearly. Now, because Jesus is the light of the world, he enables us to see ourselves more clearly. We can acknowledge that we're not perfect. When we look at Jesus uh, and look at his life and the, the perfection and the beauty of his life, we see our own shortcomings, maybe. We see our own challenges. And that's okay, because when we see our shortcomings, that gives us the possibility of growth and change. Um, and maybe if we don't have that light, we don't see these challenges or these struggles that we have. Uh, so when we are followers of Jesus, we can actually use the light that he gives us to see ourselves more clearly and to help us to grow into the people that he's calling us to be. So because Jesus is the light of the world and we are his followers, we in turn have become the light of the world. Uh, we can help others see what they might not otherwise see. And I think uh, it's not so much about us being light. It's because we have the light of Jesus. People see Jesus in us and through us. Uh, Jesus enlivens us. Uh, so people don't necessarily need to see 
me. It's not about me doing good works and tooting my own horn. It's about me doing good works because of what Jesus has done for me. And then when people see uh, me or Bruce or anyone doing good works, maybe prompting them to think about why. Uh, why is, is their faith have something to do with that? And so it's this light that comes in our lives from Jesus uh, that helps others uh, to see us, uh, not to see us, but to see Jesus more clearly and to see themselves more clearly, uh, to see that if a person like Garth can grow and change, then it's possible if I'm in relationship with Jesus to have growth and change as well. And there are a couple implications, I think, for us in these difficult times based on this topic of Jesus and us being the light of the world. I just want to mention two. Uh, first, when the darkness closes in, when it feels dark and depressing, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Uh, in, time, in this time, depression and uh, things of that sort are running rampant because people feel isolated. And uh, so I would urge you to keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, look to him when you, things feel dark. Uh, because when you follow Jesus, you don't need to be despairing. Uh, he gives you the light that you need. Uh, instead of focusing on all of these bad and difficult and challenging things, which I've brought up, um, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he can help us by providing a light that is the way forward through these things in dark times. So keep your eyes firmly fixed on him, and he will provide a way forward. The author of the book of Hebrews in the Bible says this, about we who have been enlightened by Christ. Those are the words he uses. This is what he says about Jesus. We are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and preserve their souls. So as followers of Christ, we have no need to shrink back. Uh, we can faithfully follow Jesus, who is the light of the world and who gives us light as we journey forward. And secondly, just to reiterate, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine brightly in these dark days. Uh, everyone is, I mean, most everyone is experiencing some challenge or trial that we don't even necessarily see. But you might be the only light that they see. So there are those that each of us have in our circles of influence, our spheres of influence, that may need some light. And Jesus has provided us with light so we can provide it to others. So I want to encourage you uh, to be the light of the world. You just have to follow Jesus to the best of your ability uh, to be that light. You don't have to be perfect. Uh, you don't have to do everything correctly. You just need to embrace Christ and do your best and your light will shine. Um, so we need to stop looking at the darkness and focus on the light. Uh, if we want our communities, our country, our world to be a better place, uh, we need to shine with the light of Christ for he is the one who casts out all darkness. I want to close just by reading a passage from Isaiah, which I think Jesus had in mind when he was talking about light. Um, and this is from the Old Testament, but it's for followers of God, like those of us who are followers of Jesus. This is what Isaiah says. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward. The glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then when you call, the Lord will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will become known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. I just want to urge you uh, as followers of Jesus to fix your eyes on him. Uh, fix your eyes on the light of the world. Uh, and then 
go out and be the light of the world uh, for those, our fellow brothers and sisters, who are stumbling around in the darkness, uh, who need some light. Amen. Bruce, any, any thoughts or reflections? Yeah, thanks, Garth. Um, as, as you were talking, uh, when we came into the chapel, uh, the only light we really had was the lights uh, from the chapel. It was cloudy out. But since you've been speaking, the light is now shining in these southern windows so beautifully. And the pews over there are, are just lit up beautifully. Um, I, I, I love the concept of light and an analogy that I think often my uh, kids gave me last Christmas, a gift of a headlamp. I'd never really had a headlamp before. And now with this headlamp, I can do all kinds of things at night in the dark, uh, bring wood in or whatever what needs to happen. And the, the analogy is, is that, it, uh, you know, that headlamp allows me to see, allows me to see. And I think the light of Jesus Christ allows us to see the beauty of life in front of us that way. And so that headlamp. And the last thing I think about when I think about light is, is that when we do our Christmas Eve service, not exactly sure how that's going to look this year. But we always, right here in the middle, we have a table and we have the Christ candle. And everybody has their own candles. And um, we, uh, we, um, we bring all the lights in the chapel down. And so it goes perfectly black just for a moment. And then we light the Christ candle. And this one beautiful big candle lit actually drives out the darkness in the chapel. And then we use that light to light that candle to light all, all the individual candles. And pretty soon the chapel is ablaze, beautiful light coming from all these candles. And each person, their light shines into the darkness and, and brings about the glory of God. So um, that's a, just a, a, I love that experience at Christmas Eve where, where the light just drives out the darkness. And it is in our life every day. And I, th I think of waking up in the morning, you know, I wake up early and it's quite black out, it's pitch black. And all of a sudden the sun comes up and light dawns and the, the early morning light just brings a beauty. So I love what you're talking about light and, and the, the light that Jesus Christ claims in his life and in our life and that we can let our light shine into the world. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, should we sing? As we always do, and we hope you join us, um, we'll sing this beautiful um, song that we do after, um, uh, after we uh, offer a homily, um, and it's uh, surely the presence, and I have it right here. So please uh, uh, join us. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Closing prayer for us. Sure, I'd be glad to. Gracious God, we're, we're so grateful for your word and in your word today that Garth lifted up so beautifully, Lord, you are the light of the world and you are the light of the universe. And when we can fix our eyes upon you, we know that light and the gift of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. 
So when things get challenging and things are challenging right now, Lord, let us turn to you and know of that light for you are the King of Kings, the glory of glory. Lord, we pray for all of those uh, that are part of this Silver, community, Silver Bay community and beyond that need prayer, that are struggling with anxiety or physical or psychological pain and hurt. Lord, we just ask your blessing upon all those that need your light today. Those that are struggling with COVID, those that are isolated, those that are not able to be in community, gracious God, we ask your blessing be upon them. And Lord, we just take a moment to, uh, to lift up um, all of those that, that are, again, are part of the Silver Bay community, dotted all around the country and around the world. We're grateful for them. And Lord, we, we just uh, offer this prayer as we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Shall we sing one last sure. song? You know, there's only one song we can do now, Garth. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's uh, This Little Light of Mine. And uh, please join in. If uh, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you'll know it and kids know it in terms of that. So... This little light of mine. I think I have the wrong key. I think I better do it in a different key. This little light of mine, I'm gonna make it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna make it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna make it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine it all around this great big world, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine it all around this great big world, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine it all around this great big world, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. I don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It is little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, thank you all for being with us uh, today as we uh, were able to talk about light. We do hope that you will uh, embrace the light of the world, Jesus Christ, and that you will shine your light. And if for some reason you have struggles with finding that light or uh, going it alone, uh, please don't uh, try to do it alone. Give Bruce or I a call, send us an email. We would love to talk with you. Uh, to listen, uh, to be here for you. Even if you can't be here physically, we'd love to interact with you uh, on the phone or via Zoom or however we can be of help. Uh, please reach out to us. Uh, our email addresses are on our website, and so please do that. Uh, and also, these videos will begin, uh, I guess they're already begun airing, but they air weekly at noontime on Wednesdays, and so tune in there. Uh, we have some other spiritual life programming. We have uh, monthly prayer gatherings, uh, and we have uh, every other week we have a spiritual life reading group, a spiritual life centering prayer group. And so if you'd like to uh, connect with us, and those will take place over Zoom, so uh, just reach out, send an email, I can add you to our email list, and, and you can join us in any of those forums. Uh, but we're glad that you are with us today. We pray that this is a, a blessing for you and that you will have uh, just a great rest of your day. Yeah, and, and just those email addresses, gallen at silverbay.org, 
and B. Tamlin at silverbay.org. And we would love to connect with you. Again, we might be physically apart, but boy, we are connected as a community of faith and would love to have you be a part of whatever we have going on here in terms of that. And we are so blessed to bring this to you. And thank you so much for being with us today and hope you're able to be with us on future Wednesdays. God bless.